components of a cell. So till now we know that biology is the study of life and cells are known to be the basic fundamental unit of life. So in order to study the functioning of life we need to study the functioning of cells. In our previous session on cells we have said that any living organism is ultimately made up of cells. So the functions that we perform will be similar to the functions that a cell performs. Like say for example respiration, growth, reproduction all these functions are performed both in an organism as well as in a cell. But in a cell it all happens at a cellular level. Now a living organism may be of two types an animal which also includes humans and it can also be a plant. So since these two living organisms are different they will be made up of two different types of cells that is an animal cell and a plant cell. So let's look at what these cells are actually composed of. But before that I want you to know that both these cells differ from each other with respect to their structure and also they differ with respect to their contents. So let's start studying the components one by one in detail. So let's start with the first one that is the cell membrane. Now do you see this outer covering which is holding all the contents together in both types of cell? Yes, this lining or covering that helps to compartmentalize a cell is called its cell membrane. So just like a room is contained by walls, the components of a cell are contained by its cell membrane which is also called as a plasma membrane. Now to define it in a clear way, it's the outer thick covering of the cell which separates one cell from the other and it also separates the cell from its outer environment. This covering of a cell as you see is not completely closed. It has small pores or we can say gates which allow the entry or exit of substances. Now simultaneously this membrane also restricts some substances which are not needed by the cell. And scientifically we call such a membrane a semi-permeable membrane. So in a simple way we can imagine it to be a school gate which allows only the students and teachers of that school to enter the gate. Now there's also something called as a permeable membrane. So in contrast to a semi-permeable membrane, this permeable membrane will allow the entry and exit of all types of substances in and out of the cell. But a cell membrane is always a semi-permeable membrane. Now coming to the second component that is a cell wall. Now initially I told you all that an animal cell and a plant cell differs from each other. Now one of the differences is that a plant cell has an additional outer covering apart from the cell membrane and this is called as a cell wall. Taking the school example again, the cell wall acts as a fence which surrounds the school. So this cell wall that you see over here is composed of a protein named cellulose which offers rigidity to the plant cell to sustain conditions like increase in temperature and strong winds. Again please remember that this cell wall is present only in a plant cell. Coming to the third one that is cytoplasm. Now inside the cell membrane there is jelly like fluid which is present in both types of cell. Now the function of this fluid is that it acts as a medium for transportation of substances in and out of the cell. Cytoplasm not only helps for transportation but it also helps to hold various organs of a cell. So we all know that a human body is made up of various types of organs. Similarly, a cell has different organs to perform different functions. But we won't call them organs, we call them cell organelles. These organelles are found to be free-floating structures in the cytoplasm. So as we spoke about two different types of living organisms, plants and animals, we all know that both these living organisms have different roles to perform in the environment. And hence their functions are also different. 
So accordingly, they have different types of cell organelles which help them perform these functions. And we'll be learning about these cell organelles in detail in our upcoming sessions. So till then, here's a small exercise for you all. It's like a revision of the components of a cell. I want you to label the components of a cell that we just learned. Can you do this? So let's get started. So till the next session, follow your curiosity and do subscribe to Let's Tute. Don't forget to like, comment and share. And if you have any doubts, you can ask me in the comments below. Thank you.